Do you ever wonder how YouTubers like PewDiePie and Mr. Beast were able to grow such a massive, loyal following? Or how about this? Do you ever wonder how certain companies seem to grow exponentially without ever spending money on advertising? Well, if you answered yes to either of these questions, then stay tuned because you do not want to miss this in-depth analysis of Tribes by Seth Godin. Let's get right into the lessons from this book. Lesson 1. Tribes are about connection. A tribe is a group of people connected to each other, connected to a leader, and connected to an idea. There are religious tribes, sports tribes, and there are even comic book tribes. There are two requirements to transform any ordinary group of people into a tribe. First, a tribe needs a shared interest. Tribes are formed by uniting people around a common goal, purpose, or idea. The second thing a tribe needs is a way for its members to communicate. The more quickly and easily the tribe can communicate, the more that tribe will flourish. Connection is key to a successful tribe because connection is how ideas are spread. This leads us to lesson two. Tribes are the new way of spreading ideas. You see, the old way of spreading ideas was mass marketing. Mass marketing involved using advertisements to force people to listen to a company or an organization's message. The message was pushed onto people and everyone had to listen, whether they wanted to hear it or not. At its core, the old model was about making average products for average people. And the organization with the most money and power usually came out on top because it could buy more advertisements than everyone else. However, eventually, people grew tired of listening to messages they didn't ask to hear. Here's where modern marketing comes into play. The new way of spreading ideas is through the tribe. This method involves leading and connecting a small group of fanatics, and those fanatics become members of the tribe and spread the tribe's message to each other and to outsiders. Thus, instead of spreading a message by forcing it on the masses, the tribe spreads the message to people who want to listen, and the flame grows from a spark to a raging inferno. In this way, connection creates growth. As the tribe grows, the members assemble more tribes, and those tribes assemble even more tribes. The tribe continues growing and forming connections until, eventually, the connections turn exponential and the tribe becomes a movement. Are you starting to understand the power of tribes now? Let's move on to lesson three. Tribes follow heretics. Heretics are people willing to challenge the status quo. According to Webster's Dictionary, a heretic is a person holding an opinion that is at odds with what is generally accepted. People are waiting for heretics to take a stand for something they're passionate about, to assemble a tribe around that idea, and to lead. For example, in 1977, Ken Olson, who was the founder of Digital Equipment Corporation, said, and I quote, There is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. In the very same era, Steve Jobs said, People will be using computers at home not just for business, but for fun. Which one of these people do you think fits the definition of a heretic? We all know how this story turned out. Jobs was determined to give computers to the masses. He was the quintessential heretic, and he led one of the greatest tribes of all time. This brings us to the next point. Lesson four, tribes are assembled, not created. Think about it. Steve Jobs didn't invent people who love technology and computers. He led them. In the same way, the Beatles didn't invent teenagers they led them. Fast Company didn't invent innovators and entrepreneurs. PewDiePie didn't invent gamers. Tesla didn't invent the electric automobile, but it certainly created a tribe around the idea. 
Tribes are created by assembling a group that's disconnected but already shares a common interest. They are waiting somewhere, ready for the idea, eager to be connected. Now, let's move on to a very important lesson and an area that's often misunderstood. Lesson 5. The tribe isn't for everyone. A successful tribe doesn't need everyone, and a successful leader doesn't try to recruit everyone. As Kevin Kelly put it in his famous article, you really only need 1,000 true fans. A successful tribe requires a core group of fanatics that are tightly connected and care enough about an idea to spread it. It needs true believers, true believers that have a desire to connect with other true believers. Therefore, successful leaders don't focus on growing the tribe. Instead, successful leaders focus on tightening the tribe, doubling down on the existing members. They do this because a tighter tribe is more likely to hear the leader and to spread ideas across its members and to the outside world. Great leaders focus on the tribe and ignore everyone else. Now, let's talk about how to change the world. Lesson 6. Tribes become movements. A connected tribe with a common interest can grow into a movement, and movements can change the world. A tribe or a leader of a tribe can create a movement by doing the following. First, they tell a story to people who want to hear it. A story about the tribe and the future it's trying to build. Second, they connect a tribe of people who are eager to connect with each other and with a leader. Third, they lead a movement by providing the tribe with direction and purpose. And finally, they make change occur. In this way, tribes can accomplish a common goal that no one tribe member could accomplish on his or her own. In this way, tribes can change the world. Now, let's get down to what it takes to lead a tribe. Lesson 7. The Elements of Leadership Leaders of different tribes can be very dissimilar. Take Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, for instance. Both great leaders, both in the same general industry, and yet they couldn't be any more different. Although leaders are often different, they all have one thing in common. They made the decision to lead. Additionally, leaders typically utilize a combination of the following elements to effectively lead a tribe. We call these the seven C's. Challenge. Leaders challenge the status quo. As we talked about, they're heretics. Culture. Leaders build a culture around their goal. Curiosity. Leaders are curious about the world they're trying to change and about how things could be in the future. Charisma. Leaders have charisma to attract and motivate followers. Some are born with charisma, and some become charismatic because they chose to lead. Communication. Leaders effectively communicate their vision for the future with enthusiasm and passion. Commitment. Leaders commit to the tribe's cause and to its members. And finally, connection. Leaders connect the tribe and facilitate communication among its members. The world is more connected and there are more tribes than ever before. In fact, anyone with enough passion can assemble a tribe and lead it. So I have to ask you a question. Why not you? Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you loved it, if you really loved it, please smash like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time on Mentally Fit.